Well, hello, good morning, and uh, thanks for attending this event, this uh, panel where we have invited uh, uh, three experts uh, representing the companies that are uh, managing data, important companies who are at this moment monitoring the activity in the market. And I think that uh, it's very important to listen to their opinion and their presentations to see how they see the situation, mainly in Europe. So we're going to concentrate today in Europe. So thanks, Pierre, for coming. Thank you, Thomas, and thank you, Anurag, for uh, being on this panel. Uh, this is this is going to be uh, posted on uh, Application Rental Safe Harbor. It's a platform that uh, experts on the sector have created to uh, provide uh, tools, ideas, and tips to property managers to uh, hold the situation. So. Uh, I will start by orders uh, of arrival. So first will be Anurag, uh, who uh, came to the meeting. And uh, uh, well, Anurag, uh, thank you and uh, welcome to this uh, panel. Thank you so much, Jose, for uh, for organizing the panel. Uh, what I'm planning on doing is I'll, I'll share my screen and show some data on the bookings that we have been seeing on our platform and what what change in trends we have observed to see if that can help people figure out what change they should do uh, in their pricing policies, in their restrictions, et cetera. Um, can you guys let me know if you can see this? Yeah. Cool. OK, so, yes. so I'm going to dive into each one of these three bullet points. But, but if, if there were three things that we want you to take out of this, the first one is, is not something I need to tell anyone. I think everyone has seen this. Uh, to the same or higher extent that the new bookings are down 80%. Uh, and in the data we are, uh, we are going to show here, I'm not necessarily going to look at cancellations. It, it's a topic that has been discussed um, to, a, to a fair extent already. Uh, what I want to discuss is, is new bookings because we are still seeing new bookings coming in. So there is still some hope and some revenue uh, that, that companies can make to sort of uh, go cross over this 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 event currently. So new bookings are down eighty percent. Uh, everybody knows that. Uh, the the change, the big change we are seeing is average length of stay has really gone up in the last week or so, uh, almost by two x. Uh, and and we'll see some data related to this. Uh, and then the third is that the booking lead time is down fifty percent. And and we'll deep dive into this as well. Uh, quick overview. This is data for the entire world, but we have done splits and cuts by different countries or continents or types of market. And all three charts are very consistent across. So we are going to see the charts for the entire world. And when there was a deviation in a certain market, I'm, I'm going to call that out as well. Um, so the very first part uh, is, is the total number of bookings. So if you want help reading this chart, each each of these columns is a date. So what we are saying is how many bookings were coming in on each each booking day in February, and then how has it changed over the course of late February and then recently March when late February is when people started reducing just because something was coming in. There were not as many restrictions except for Italy. Um, and now is it's just restrictions, travel restrictions uh, everywhere, pretty much, right? Uh, and then it's a lot more serious. Or the, the problem was serious even before, but but now it's being taken as a serious problem. So that itself tells a story of like how new bookings have just really dried up. More importantly, uh, what we are seeing on the flip side is the bookings for longer length of stays have actually gone up. So. In the previous chart where I'm looking at all bookings, it's looking at bookings that are between one to 60 length, uh, days uh, in length of stay. This one is just looking at bookings that are 15 to 21, 22 to 30, and 31 to 60. So pretty much 15 to 60 uh, night long. Um, it shows that at those bookings are actually increasing, which uh, I mean, a lot of people have commented on how they are trying to market to new categories. Uh, and not necessarily market, it's just without even marketing, there is just a need for housing for professionals, medical professionals, or people who are uh, in quarantine in a country that they can't move out of anymore and things like that. Uh, so we are really seeing that happen. And then the third big takeaway we are seeing is 
the, this is the same chart that, that we saw in the first one. Uh, if you see the magnitude, it's pretty similar. But now it's broken up by lead time. So the, the greenish gray here is same day bookings. The light green is bookings made within the next week. Uh, blue is booking made two weeks out. Dark blue is 15 plus days. So back in February, you could see that a solid 60% or almost 60% of the bookings that were being made were for days that or stays that were more than seven days out. Uh, and plenty of bookings being made for two to six months out. This is the purple here. What we are seeing now is that has just dried up, which which completely makes sense. Uh, nobody knows when this is going to go away, but uh, uh, when this is going to go away, and they know that okay, if things get better in summer, they can still book then. But for now, people have just stopped making plans way into the future. Not even way into the future, even two weeks out. This this blue is seven to fourteen days out, and and people have stopped making those bookings. Surprisingly, for uh, for a lot of people, there are still bookings being made, uh, although the, the volume is a little bit down for bookings within seven days. And that's the light green that you see. And then the the this gray color is holding pretty steady, which suggests that same day bookings are, are holding steady, which makes sense because a lot of people in distress uh, need a right now and and they pretty much need it right away so so they are they're still booking in as much numbers as they were before um, what can be done about this uh, just by looking at the data given all the cancellations and given the reduction in booking volume we know that there is a lot of supply out there uh, way more than uh, what the demand is uh, but Given that there is still some demand for longer length of stays, uh, we have seen customers get reasonably good results from having very aggressive uh, weekly discounts. We also have some customers who have tried to shift away or set aside some part of their inventory to to just take longer bookings. Um, and if you have only if you only have one or two listings, even if you are a smaller property manager, even then you can start, try doing this where you can say, okay, I'm going to reserve some portion of my inventory because I know there might be demand that is uh, that is from professionals that I want to help or that is from people who are in distress that, that would need a week long booking or two weeks long stays. And I want to make sure there's something available for them. So uh, give deep, deep discounts there. Uh, it's not even about, uh, it, you should obviously look at the market, but also keep in mind that given everything is available, there is there is a lot of choice out there, and it, this is also people in distress. So I, I, it it seems the market already takes care of it. You can't charge too much for people in distress at this time. In some ways, the second uh, bullet here, the second action item that that we want to give people is uh, go a little more aggressive on last minute discounts. So set set a minimum price that that you. Uh, never want to go below and maybe reconsider that so if you if you were if you had a minimum price earlier that was um, 100 uh, euros now maybe you want to make it 80 euros as long as it covers your costs and and doesn't result in you losing money on a stay uh, it, it's fair to take whatever can come as long as i mean and and this is fully knowing that there are places in europe where short term rentals are almost banned right now so you can't do anything um, but if, if you are in a place where you can still host there is demand that does need some place to stay so so look out for that and it is trying to book only for very short term in the next uh, next week or so uh, this has been covered widely but but this makes all the sense um, nobody who's booking right now knows whether they'll be able to actually make it to the booking or not so you almost need to give flexible cancellation policies, uh, regardless of what what we were doing before in terms of strict or moderate. Uh, now, when somebody books, they are just going to expect flexible uh, flexible stays, uh, and then fewer restrictions. Like given how much supply is out there, uh, there would have been a case to say, "Hey, I'd never want to take anything shorter than three nights." Uh, but right now, uh, things things are bad enough, uh, and the market is open enough that, uh, from a revenue perspective, if your operations allow for it, uh, our recommendation is uh, is to just go take whatever bookings you can. Uh, again, if your operations allow for it. If if they don't, then, then obviously, yeah. Um, with that, I'm uh, 
this this was more or less my part of the the data that I wanted to show. The other trend that that's not uh, showing here, and and Jose uh, mentioned that briefly, is we are still seeing that people who had made bookings for the summer are are not canceling, and there are two reasons for it. One, people don't know how the summer is going to pan out just yet, and two, uh, the cancellation policies for summer have not been changed yet. So that might also be like people might want to cancel, but they might be holding up to say, hey, when uh, when if if it comes to that date and things are still bad, then then obviously everybody will become more flexible with cancellations, um, cancellations or, or deferrals for future and things like that. So. Uh, keep an eye on that as well because I know uh, summer is is uh, protect. If if you can protect the summer season in some ways, that's that's important for uh, for protecting the entire year in some ways in many locations. Okay, thank you, Anurag. I I like very much the presentation. It gives a uh, um, good hope uh, to people. We can comment afterwards why why people is moving to long term uh, bookings. I think uh, there is an explanation here in the US. I'd like to bring some data afterwards uh, another finish so we, we can see why and how uh, property managers can take advantage of that tendency in the market to, to make more business. Okay, so uh, uh, Thomas, it's, it's your turn. I can't hear you. We can't hear you, Thomas. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's not the first time I think this has happened on a video call. <laughs> but again, yes. So thanks for inviting me on, Jose. Um, we've tried at AirDNA and, every, and Price Labs and Transparent to try and look for some positivity everywhere. So I think before I say anything, let's not pretend for our industry. I mean, it's a charnel house when we see how we never expected travel to be the source of a recession. I think when I spoke to STR, they, their business um, really came on in the last recession because there was a recession and then data became important in travel. But then for us, we never predicted that travel would be the source of the recession almost. So it's definitely grim out there. So before I wanted to preface that because there is some positivity out there, but let's not pretend there's good news everywhere. So the initial thing we saw was a great flow of what we thought of as quarantine tourism. So this is when we look at the cities that were slowly closing down. People with capital who could work from home flew to uh, the countryside where they thought this was a better place to sit out a quarantine. So we know in the Hamptons we saw... Um, some of our clients with 600 properties and they said it was like the middle of summer there that bookings were through the roof that our, our data was saying up 300 percent 400 percent year on year so this was a great hope but so our great advice to property managers out there is don't have 600 properties in barcelona have 600 properties in the hamptons but unfortunately this advice is not good you cannot trade where your properties are so uh, as Anurag gave some great overall data, and he did point out that every market is different. So if you have uh, properties in a, in somewhere pleasant, rural in the US, I think of the Hamptons or the Jersey Shore in the UK, I think of Cornwall or the Lake District in Germany, the North Sea Coast. Yeah, there's some great opportunities there at the moment. I think so many of those lengthy stays uh, are coming from there. And as we look at our data in the marketplace, that's what we're seeing. Long, long stays but The average length of stay being 17 days, more than three in most of those uh, seaside rural markets. But I just saw in the news half an hour ago, Corm uh, so the Lake District has forbidden visitors. So in the UK, the Lake District is an area which would hit the sweet spot. Our data shows there was a boom time for isolated cottages in the Lake District. That's evaporating. So when we think of this quarantine tourism, I think everywhere will catch up with that. As Anurag said, it's almost banned in many European places. In Spain, it's forbidden. Uh, in France, even though we've seen some boon times there, it's heavily frowned upon. So this quarantine tourism in the pleasant idylls is, is a flash in the pan that I think is out. But where else can we take sucker? Well, as we continue to see bookings coming through, 
And the great thing with short-term rentals is the diversity of uses. So ever since we started looking at reviews as to where visitors come from for any month, the most popular city for visitors to London has always been London. The most popular city for visitors to Paris has always been Paris. And this shows the diversity of uses that short-term rentals have. So when we talk about those last-minute bookings, Anurag mentioned health visitors or health workers. So you, you've got key workers who can't rely on their normal transportation, who want to be near where their work is. We have family members who don't want to be the other side of the country from their family. We've anecdotally um, seen bookings in small residences and we've heard from some of our end users that this is just somewhere where someone can work because their office is shut, they need to work from home, they have a handful of children, dogs and cats and need to be able to concentrate. So bookings are still happening. You just have to be open to the kind of bookings that you're getting in the future. And when we look at our forward data and um, we see what bookings are happening on different days, they're still happening for time in the future as well. You can't underestimate the positivity that people have over what's going to happen in the future. I don't have the host of slides that, um, that Anurag had, but I just, I'm going to share this. I just uh, had this hot off the press from our PR team. If you can see my screen, it's... Can I get a thumbs up if you can see my screen? Yeah, okay, good. So this is what we just looked into for uh, some European cities for where reservations are happening. Now, Valencia is particularly interesting because uh, Valencia has its fire festival that was cancelled over the Easter period. And the week commenced in July the 12th. This, this happened on the 11th of March. So you can see the positivity there. July, the very beginning of summer, people still felt they could make reservations in that market. So I think this is an indicator, and we can see Munich here as well for Oktoberfest. There's still a lot of reservations exist. I think as Adam mentioned before, this one is more interesting because maybe these uh, were existing reservations. I haven't got the granularity and the data to hand there. But what was encouraging was Valencia. People still feel that festival will go ahead. So uh, that, that was the extent of our slides for here. So, but I do think you have to retain the positivity that by keeping your properties open, there's reservations still to be had. That said, it's obviously super tough as a vacation rental manager to see whether you want to be able to keep your listings open. We saw Stay Alfred last night just shut everything for eight weeks. No bookings. They completely try to hibernate from uh, this drawdown so they can reduce their staff costs. Stay off it, particularly in urban markets, which we know are particularly struggled in these times. We've also seen from Vacasa, they too have attempting the very best they can to do to hibernate. So they had their huge layoffs last week and then this week they furloughed uh, nearly everyone who wasn't enabled to keep the lights going at Vacasa. So it is a serious thought you need to have with your portfolio. Uh, can you, is it worth shuttering the whole property or should you keep some open in the expectation of bookings? I tend towards the latter, that bookings are still happening. I, I want to reiterate that this is a bleak time, but they are still happening. And if you can minimize your costs in that time, so as a vacation rental manager, you think those investments in the future are making, they, they are perhaps costs that perhaps you perhaps can't afford to tolerate at the moment, but keeping your bare bones operation staff running so you can take these bookings is important. And similarly, I think when the world recovers, we'll see it coming first in vacation rentals. So going back to how they have diverse uses, they're also, if there's, uh, when, when we look about how we're gonna come out of our quarantine, it's not going to be one day the world is back open for business. It's going to be a slow, gradual return to normality. And I think for people looking to take a vacation, that slow return to normality will be looking to take vacations in places that are nearby, that they can drive to. Uh, and that is most likely not to be hotels. I think vacation rentals, short-term rentals will be the primary choice for um, going on a short break. And if you 
shutter your businesses entirely and aren't able to take bookings, aren't able to update your listings, then you won't be there to take advantage of that. I think the final thing I wanted to mention was, as Anna I talked about, flexible cancellation. It is imperative to make your terms as flexible as possible. We see, it, we, we haven't analyzed the data in entirety, but having looked at our provisional data, the number of bookings going to those with flexible cancellations versus to strict is entirely different as to what it was some weeks ago. Because you don't know what the world is going to look like in July. If you can make a flexible booking, you can have hope and plan for the future. But a strict cancellation, there is no reason why anyone would book that listing when there's a flexible cancellation available. And as you've seen, the OTAs have somewhat made the idea of a strict cancellation not the thing it used to be. So the value of a strict cancellation is somewhat in doubt. So overall, there are spots we're going to live as an industry. We'll be the first in travel to come out of this quagmire. Uh, so if you can keep your listings open, then there is hope. Thanks, Jose. Thank you very much. Very interesting presentation. OK, Pierre. Yeah, Jose, thanks for having me, guys. Great to be in that, in that call with you. Obviously, we've covered a lot of interesting points. Um, I'm just going to, you know, shed some more lights on what you guys have, have commented and also like you did Tom try to focus on 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 what is of positive here and what we can try to hope you know for the future so I'm going to share my screen we've uh, we've prepared a special landing page for the situation so I'm just going to share that can you guys see it yeah Great, great. All right. So I'm just going to open that up. So, you know, the main the main idea here is that, as you all know, you know, we're in front line of a global health and economic crisis. Right. So I just want to show how, you know, how important that is and, and how, you know, we're all affected in this chart. We just basically put together the stock prices of the OTAs that are listed. So, you know, Airbnb is not here, but yet listed in the stock market. But you've got Booking, TripAdvisor and Expedia. So you can see how much money they've lost in the stock market from you know the first of January to where we are today. So there's a you know a small recovery in the last uh, week, but basically, you know, as of the 13th of March, um, these companies have lost altogether 40 billion that has evaporated in the stock market. So let's remember that this you know this valuation are basically the reflect of the commission they charge to our industry, and this is how the industry is sort of discounting. And, you know, all our, our, the financial markets are discounting our industry for, for the terrible crisis. So we are really on the front line, like Tom said, of, of that crisis. We're at the origin of it. And if you look at the NASDAQ, obviously, you know, it's been able to uh, maintain a, a higher price and, 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 you know, less of a drop in price. So really, again, we're on the front line here. Um, you know, one thing to echo what you guys have, have talked about earlier is obviously we've also seen this decline in, in demand. So this chart is a couple of weeks old. We're going to refresh it. But basically, you could see here, um, you know, the data from last year globally in terms of occupancy and where we are. And really, you know, when Italy entered into this uh, health crisis, this is the time where we could see how clearly uh, demand has dropped below the level of last year. And when we did this, basically, as of March, uh, the first week of March, China was already 60% down in terms of, of demand. And, and take into account that a lot of that are, are still no shows and, uh, and cancellations. And then you know, slowly you could see how Italy was entering into the crisis and the rest of the country. So this, you know, we can't predict the future, but this gives you an, a good idea if your market hasn't been really shut down yet, that you got to expect that it's going to be even tougher uh, in the next weeks. Right. And I think one one interesting point as well is on, on cancellation. So, you know, we've all seen the trends in cancellation. I just wanted to show you here, you know, last week, how it looked like compared by region. I'm just going to load that quickly. All right. And basically you could see here, Europe in blue, you know, was having a very high ratio of cancellations overall, all of the movements we could see on the calendars, you know, normal times we got 25% of the movements are basically cancellation 2025. Now we get uh, more than 150%. And, you know, United States was following slowly with uh, South America, uh, a parallel pass as Europe. And as of last week, basically this has shifted and, and the US has also entered into into the spiral of cancellations. And like Anurag mentioned, it's a lot of that is due to market shutting down. You know, Florida has completely shut down the market. So uh, it's true we've seen some um, um, quarantine uh, tourism, like Tom mentioned it. Uh, if you look at this chart in France, for instance, you could see uh, this is the data, uh, the data right before the shutdown. We had a surge in, in demand versus last year. 
uh, for the week right before. But basically, after that, it's just you know, it's just going to be drop as markets are being shut down. And it's also something we need to reflect on. Is you know, it doesn't make sense to open to large cities, um, you know, our vacation rentals because this is basically how the virus is spreading, right? So basically, it's just delaying, um, you know, an eventual shutdown. So these are all things to take into account because, like Tom mentioned, eventually we'll, we'll get to to shut down in most of the markets. Um, maybe just point on cancellation policies. You know, like you guys said, there will be a before and there will be an after. This is the before. This is you know how globally more or less. Um, well, this is on Airbnb, uh, the breakdown of cancellation policy. So you got 39% flexible now and, and the rest is between moderate and strict. We think that there will be an after for sure as, as you know, we'll have to adapt to the complete uncertainty we're living. And we don't know how long this, this uh, period of uh, isolation will last, right? Um, so that's a little bit where, where we are today. And now I wanted to share some some ideas on, on how how this could get better, right? So just an example to echo what Tom said about, you know, the, the summer and, you know, some events still having some demand. So this is an example in Mallorca here where you can see the Easter holiday this year versus last year at the same time. Clearly there's, a you know, much less demand, but there are still some level of demand. So people haven't totally canceled and they, they could still expect some hope in terms of uh, being able to to go on there the holiday and the summer is pretty strong as well and, and compared to uh, quite a lot to last year so there hasn't been yet much cancellation and this is you know mostly due to the uncertainty so again to echo uh, the effort everyone can make on cancellation is probably being flexible to make sure we can continue filling the books in case this travel can actually happen um all right so i'm, I'm going to go back to this slide and, and maybe a couple of other things we uh, we think could be positive, positive things. Um, domestic travel, like, like obviously, after being locked down for so long, people will be looking to to escape from homes. You know, we're in Europe here. Some market has already been three weeks in lockdown, so you know, people will look at escaping their home, and some markets are really prepared for that. You know, the United States is already ninety percent domestic travel. Uh, France is, you know, two thirds of domestic. So some markets are already naturally prepared to. Um, to welcome this domestic travel. And we think that, you know, uh, being able to advertise your properties to people nearby is going to be key in the next few weeks and at least during the recovery time. Um, and that's that's very important. And I think it will also affect the way we promote our properties. You know, one, one thing we see people um, potentially do is advertise how they're going to speci especially clean their properties, right? So one thing you could do is, for instance, set up uh, two nights after every checkout to make sure your property is empty, so the virus has time to die before you send in your 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 cleaning staff. First, to not put into you know a job, like endanger your cleaning staff, and as well to make sure that um, you know the property is completely sanitized when it's that. And you can also advertise if you use any special cleaning products. Make sure that you advertise that in the listings, uh, so people are aware that you're making these extra steps. And one thing that I think is also a good idea is in these times, bumping up your cleaning fee can actually be something positive because people will see you're taking this extremely seriously as you should and that you're actually going to spend money to make sure the property is clean. So, you know, even though you drop your rates, what we say is rates are really not a matter at the moment because it's basically shut down. So make sure you, you maintain a high cleaning fee and you promote that. Make sure you, um, people are aware that you're, you're, you're working on, on that safety, right? Uh, and then maybe one one other thing we see people interested in is like Anurag says, you know, um, the length of stays are, are increasing as people are, are renting for the time of the lockdown. Basically, what you can uh, look at is different midterm platforms. So we've made a compilation uh, of them, obviously to look at some temporary alternatives um, and make sure you get some, some extra extra booking. But you can also pay with the uh, with the weekly discounts or monthly discounts on the platforms you usually use, right? Uh, and maybe la one last point here. I wanted to share with you some uh, some data from uh, from SDR that I mentioned uh, this hotel benchmarking company uh, from the SARS outbreak in 2003. So no, none of us were there because shopping rental I was not developed at the time. But obviously, uh, what you can see here is how the recovery happened after the SARS epidemic in, in China. So so the occupancy quickly dropped, but also get back quite fast. And you can see that you know slowly every market recovered uh, a few months after. Um, so what what I want to say with that is, you know, there is 
there is hope. There is hope. Uh, uh, Travel will Travel. recover. Travel will recover. I don't know how long it's going to take. So buckle up, you know, if you can hibernate, make sure you hibernate, maintaining the minimum levels. Uh, but at the same time, you know, travel will come back. And uh, and you need to be ready for that, right? So we think it's going to start with domestic and then it's going to slowly uh, expand. But, you know, get ready for 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 these reservations that are going to come. And, uh, and yeah, just to these times, you know, we're all suffering. I think everyone can can attest from talking to our clients and, you know, ourselves being located in these areas and our business is all suffering. So we're all making efforts and, um, yeah, we'll, we'll continue updating these numbers. I'm sure Anurag and Tom will, will do the same uh, to keep everyone posted so, so we can be ready for the, the sign signals of recuperation. Okay. Thank you, Pierre. Very interesting uh, presentations we had today. I think it's it's very important. Uh, every single uh, areas that you guys focused on are, are very important. And I think that the, the value of the data that you bring here will give at least options to people to start thinking about what's a crisis and what's about uh, to, to manage a crisis. I don't think nobody has the crystal ball to know when things will happen, but uh, all of us know that a crisis means something changed, and this sector has been changed. I mean, we can look forward or backwards, nothing is going to be like it was before. So I think a lot of people should think about how to transform their business versus the future. I think good tips were given here during the, 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 the presentations. Definitely, uh, uh, the word is flexibility. You need to do flexibility. Also, think about, about transforming transforming your business as well, while at least this gets to the end, so as it is uncertain. If, if high uh, or long stay uh, it's uh, demanding, you should transform your business, you should flow with the demand. If, you, if you're able to do that, probably you will get out of this crisis much better or in better conditions. Something interesting that was said, and I believe that uh, uh, it was what uh, Nurang and, and Thomas and you said, is, is this uh, quarantine tourism. Uh, yesterday, it was 200 flights coming from New York to Florida. For some reason, people believe that uh, there are uh, 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 chances to skip the virus because of the worm. I think it's been like a kind of a false false message that the worm, uh, it's, uh, it's bad for the virus. But definitely, yeah. But uh, I don't think that uh, as much as people believe. So people is going to warm areas because they believe it would be less transmission. Uh, uh, this period of time, all of stay at home, no matter what. So uh, it doesn't matter if you are in Germany or if you are in in, uh, in South Carolina. You need to be at home, and, and that's the point. But truly, there are some specific people who's looking for long-term uh, properties to stay longer or stay away, or just because they need to get isolated from their relatives. So there are a lot of families that they, they, they still have their parents around or they're living with their parents and they need to isolate because they, they want to protect their families. And I think that that was one of the reasons why a lot of people who's retired and they have their pensions, they have their, their, their salaries, they need to get isolated so they, they go away uh, somehow and they get isolated too. Now, there are so many cases, but in, in, uh, in any case, uh, I think it's important to start thinking about transforming your business into what the demand is asking. And uh, many other tips that were given, I, I totally agree, that are important. Uh, I will remark that the safety of travelers is very important. So the cleaning strategy is, is pretty good. You need to uh, hide your fees on cleaning. So you show, you take care, and you are really doing uh, better. Obviously, using this kind of uh, uh, products uh, here in the US, there's one thing that run out of all the supermarkets. It's called Clorox. It literally disappeared from every single supermarket because it has a lot of properties against virus. And then there is a man in the industry that um, contacted us uh, like two or three weeks ago that they said they had a patent of um, uh, a very uh, strong product that really cleans up and it's uh, made especially for coronavirus. It was made, it was made uh, uh, nine years ago with the first SARS uh, crisis and these guys developed uh, um, uh, a product that was able to kill any virus and, and, and not avoid viruses to, to stay in the surface more than one hour. So they did pretty good. So uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, measures that uh, property managers should take into account to, to go back to the market. And uh, 
In general, I think that uh, uh, most of the countries have the same behavior, but uh, truly the, the big hope for uh, the sector is that the summer uh, will come out and uh, it will work. But uh, everybody should have a plan B for summer. So what happens if summer doesn't work? So uh, how are you going to react? So this is why the first, uh, again, coming back to flexibilities and stuff, thinking that your business may be transformed. There are lots of needs, we said, worker needs, uh, health uh, uh, people needs, uh, isolated, self-isolating needs. So it may not be a bad idea to start thinking to transform the business from short-term rentals to long-term rentals, combine properties or just uh, uh, have an internal flow where you can transform your business from this uh, to another as much flexible as possible. Another thing that was said that I think is very interesting is that one of the things that will definitely affect for the next season, no matter what happens, if the summer is going to be open or not, is that local tourism will be highly demanded by locals, which means people is not going to travel, and uh, mainly because there are uh, safety restrictions. The US has locked down their borders to certain countries, but at the same time, uh, um, they do not allow people coming from other uh, countries. So we don't know how long this measure is going to take long until, but definitely up to the summer. So don't expect foreigners come to your uh, to your area. Start promoting your uh, among your own customers local. Uh, I, I hope that was not a cough. <laughs> so let's promote local tourism and let's think about local. Uh, definitely, I think that uh, this is going to be the scenario for next year. So start working now on your market, start promoting your area and try to do your best marketing. And maybe in some countries like Spain, Portugal, uh, Italy, where vacation rental business have been locked down, if you transform to long term, it's not anymore long term. So you can put minimum stay one month and that's it. If you want to take a yes or not, or minimum stay uh, three months, depending on what local legislation asks you to. But at the end, uh, you cannot operate, if you cannot operate anymore as short term rentals, you need to be able to operate as uh, uh, a long term rental. So uh, uh, this may be one of the uh, potential advices uh, or tips that uh, can be faced for the future. I don't know what you think, uh, Anurag. No, I mean, agree. In, in markets where there is just a ban on short-term rentals altogether, uh, do whatever you can to get some revenue and, and stay afloat in some ways, right? Um, the, the, the domestic tourism part is, is super interesting, Pierre. Uh, the, and, and we covered some big countries. Uh, I'm, I'm a little concerned about the smaller ones, like Czech Republic, for example, gets almost all of their demand from, uh, from outside. Um, I'm not sure what the answer is there, except uh, again, uh, professionals who need the space uh, rather than are coming there for some form of leisure. Uh, but yeah, uh, in, in those spaces, people will have to get even more creative with, with what they do. Yeah, maybe Anurag, uh, uh, one thought here is yes. yeah. I, I think that, you know, they're also in quarantine, basically, you know, most of these small countries are also in quarantine and people, you know, will also be tired of stay, being stuck at home. So the balance will be is how bad the economy crisis is going to come along with that health crisis. Because if people, you know, lose their job and, or just have huge pay cut, they won't be able to travel domestically either. So the, the question is how long this, this is going to last and how hard is going to hit the economy in general, because, you know, everyone is slowed down now. But I, I do think there will still be some residual, uh, you know, domestic travel, even though it's not, you know, uh, the majority, it will definitely grow the share and people will just have to, to escape, um, you know, depending on, the, on how hard the crisis has hit them. I think it's a good point that the net outbound countries, so in Europe, that would be Germany, the Nordics, maybe the UK, may be real beneficiaries in mid, late summer and early autumn as they won't be able to escape to the sun in Greece, in Spain, in Italy like they could historically. And I think domestic travel is going to become the new rock and roll in the summer and this autumn. So. For those of you out there fortunate enough to have 
portfolios in those countries, I think if you can hang on, there should be a, a buoyant time for visitors then. Yeah, there is also one point that there are some people are saying that uh, the crisis will affect a lot uh, the economy of the families, which is definitely true. But we have seen many efforts from different countries like the US, and Spain, Italy. All of the governments are putting a lot of money in the market to to hold at, le at least as much as possible the, the consequences of the crisis. Of the crisis. At the, at the same time, people are now locked down on their houses. They're not spending money. So people are saving money during this period. So, and taking into account that when we say people, we don't say 100%, but let's say that 60% uh, of people, because there will be some people that will lose their jobs, but 60% of the population will, will, will save money. And uh, th there is something I, I believe psychologically is going to, to be uh, maybe a big boon in our sector is that people will need to get out of their houses. If you've been locked down in your house, uh, 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 with your family, kids, no one gets out for a, a one month, two months, which is previously what we believe is going to, to take this time, two months. The first thing you need when this will be gone is get out. and You need a holiday. So it's also a big opportunity of making good offers right now advancing and anticipating discounts for the future and try to sell them right now because people will definitely need holiday so houses with a swimming pool when you can still are isolated and take your measures would be like a, a good things to promote so uh, condos uh, also in the, in the beach areas where you can go stay safe and and uh, you know have a, 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 a tourist around depending on the area and depending how the, the health the crisis will evolve uh, could be options, but uh, I think that uh, if if the the healthy situation gets better, if treatments that are now uh, uh, being tested gets better, so people will get more more trust, and also depending obviously if a vaccine gets out in, in the market, that, that the situation will from the healthy point of view will recover. Right, but but um, I think definitely it could be that uh, by the end of this crisis, and uh, if it ends by June, end of June, beginning of July, uh, there will be still a lot of people who would like to travel and uh, get out of their houses and have uh, holiday. Yeah, maybe 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 Jose to 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 jump on on that, and you know, at at the end of the day, this crisis is not affecting only travel. We say we're on the front line, but it's affect everyone, right? So we see in every industry landlords being affected, right? It's not only people doing short-term rental. Um, you know, people renting out offices now are losing leases, and people are using force majeure to get it out. And you've seen a lot of cases of a rent strike where even if you do long-term, your renters they have had pay cuts or they are unemployed for for a time. So they just everyone is organizing and and you know basically. Uh, going out and, and negotiating a uh, lower rent. So in general, landlords, they will, you know, we were the first to be affected, but there will be a general understanding that this period is bad for every landlord. Um, and I think one thing we could do here is basically communicate actively with ours, right? So I would say a good advice is go proactively, communicate to your landlords, what's the situation on the ground. If you've got data, tell them what's going on in the market so they know it's general and it's affecting everyone. And you know, have this cadence, maybe be weekly or weekly. Uh, give them a small. It can be an email. You can use some some platform like uh, like uh, Notion, which is very great to 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 give small updates. Um, maybe we can put the link after or say in the in the article. But basically, I think it's important to communicate. Let them know what's going on. They will understand that this is a crisis that is affecting everyone. And you know, everyone, every landlord will have to make an effort. Um, obviously, we're on the front line. Uh, but communication will be key here. Okay, if you if you send to me uh, or if you give me your permission, I will put in the post also your email so people can contact you and make direct questions to you, just in case they they, sure. they have listened some of your advices and they can contact you. Okay, okay, guys, uh, thank you very much for your contribution. I think it's uh, it's very important that the experts, the people who's got the knowledge, also the data, the information in the market, gets committed with the with the whole sector. We need to hold each other, help each other, and try to uh, provide as much information as possible so people are uh, could have more options, more 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 options, more opportunities to to take the right decision. So thank you very much for your commitment, your generosity. Uh, we said we didn't want to do this commercial. 
So we didn't do commercial. Congratulations. We all know each other for many different shows. We we have been uh, uh, in this uh, business for long, and I think right now it's very it's very nice to see that uh, at the end uh, we're all uh, together on this uh, and trying to help others, which is uh, very important. I think it's uh, one of the great things that this this crisis is bringing up. The, the best and the real faces of some people. So some people are really uh, acting like heroes, uh, also uh, getting committed and, and, and pushing. Some others are instinctively uh, uh, running away, getting hired, but that's uh, the nature of, of, of human beings. So I think uh, I'd like to thank you all for uh, your contribution, which I believe is very important for everyone. Thank you. Hi, Jose. Miss you guys. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.